Chapter 10 Rose tossed beneath the nine-patch quilt of her girlhood bed. She hadn't seen much of Luke the past week and felt distant from him. She sighed aloud and forced herself to focus on her prayers. Ach, Lord, help me. Help my relationship with Luke to be true. Search my heart, dear hair, and find those shadows, those secrets that I would hide, even from myself, and bring them to light. Forgive me for spending time chasing after Luke as the man in the woods, and help him just the same. Free him from this stealing. Free me from wanting something like the wind and not the steadiness of the moment. Thank you for Luke. Thank you, dear hair, for my life and my ability to make choices. Give me wisdom, Lord. Please, give me wisdom. Utterly drained, she pulled the covers up to her chin and dreamed fitfully. Tangled blue threads, the color of the wedding dress she was sewing on a bit each day, seemed to stretch from her mind to wrap around her arms and wrists. The thread was thin but confining, and she struggled against the bonds. Then a dark-hooded stranger stood before her and raised a pair of silver shears high. She felt her breath catch in her throat at the slash of silver against the white of her skin, but then the threads were gone and she was free. She called to him because he was running from her, and he turned. The hood fell away, and Luke stood before her. Then he caught her up in a swinging embrace, and she laughed, free and clear. Rose jerked awake and sat straight up in bed. Her heart was pounding, and she stared out the window, glad to see the first streaks of the morning sun falling across the hardwood floor of her room. She decided that a walk in the woods before breakfast would clear her tangled thoughts, and she hurried to dress. She wanted to slip away before anyone would notice she was gone, she needed some time to herself to consider her dream. But when she crept downstairs, it was to find everyone wide awake and already halfway through breakfast at the kitchen table. Mom, she cried in dismay. Why didn't you call me to help with the meal? Ben laughed. We all called you, but you slept like the dead. Don't you remember that today is the first day of the fair? Rose bit her lip as she accepted a bowl of steaming oatmeal from her mother and sat down at the table. I guess I forgot, she mumbled. The first fall fair in the area was something her family always attended together, but after her poor night's sleep, the outing held little appeal. She kept seeing the moment in her dream when the stranger's hood fell backward to reveal Luke's face. As is right, her father remarked, scraping the last of his plate. Probably dreaming of your wedding coming, like any girl would. Rose concentrated on the wet lumps of her oatmeal and didn't lift her head. She had no desire to talk about dreaming, wedding or otherwise. Are you feeling well, Rosie? Auntie Tabby asked softly. A sudden inspiration struck Rose. Well, actually, if you all wouldn't mind, I wonder if I might stay home today to do some sewing on my wedding dress. I've barely pieced the pattern yet, and I feel like time is running away from me. She saw her mother glance down the table to her father's warm eyes. Yeah, Rose, Marm smiled. Just for today. Some time alone may be good for you. Rose nodded. Thank you. James held his plate out for more sausage. Yeah, Rose, but just don't go entertaining any Robin the Hood while we're gone. Luke Lance might take offense. She frowned as both of her brothers laughed and told herself that she'd had enough of fairy tales for a while. Once she'd helped clean up breakfast, then waved the family off, she decided that a walk in the brisk sunshine would do her good before beginning hours of sewing. Of their own accord, her feet seemed to lead to the forest behind her home. She spent a peaceful half hour praying as she walked, collecting the reddest leaves and daydreaming. On one level, she continued her prayers for Luke from the evening before, asking the Lord if Luke might one day escape the task of bookkeeping and use instead the ready skill he had with woodworking. But then she became aware of a rhythmic pounding from somewhere in the distance. She stopped and listened. She couldn't imagine who'd be building on anything out this far. Her steps quickened as a childish memory of an old tumble-down shack on the Lance's property surfaced in her consciousness. She crept through the trees to the sunny clearing and stopped, pressing hard against an old oak. 
clad in blue jeans, work boots, and a loose white shirt. Luke was atop the low roof of the old shack. His back was to her, his head bent, as he concentrated on securing a new white pine board to the roof. The sun caught on the muscles of his arms as he lifted the hammer, and she made an inadvertent sound of pleasure at the sight. He half turned in her direction, then seemed to tense and put a foot back onto the gray wood. There was a brief cracking sound and a muffled cry. Rose gasped as the weathered part of the roof gave way beneath his weight, and Luke disappeared in a rain of old wood and an ominous cloud of dust.' 